All right, hey everybody, thanks for joining today's TAM Nano Lab on AD authentication and uh, authentication proxy. And today we have Brandon Hahn with us. And so Brandon, you got the floor. Thank you very much. So good afternoon, uh, good morning, good evening, whatever is applicable for where you are today. I uh, just wanna take a moment, thank you for joining me. Um, looking to spend the next 10, 15 minutes together, walk through uh, basically AD authentication for ESX hosts and authentication proxy and why, why it matters to you and, and how to do it. So really there's a couple of reasons um, why you might wanna join your ESXi host to a domain, um, but really the, the main reason is for security. Uh, as you know, the main account for logging into ESXi hosts is uh, the root account. And uh, that creates a security problem because it's, uh, you know, everything is logged from an access control perspective to root. So we want to go ahead and make sure that when we add host to an ES era, yeah, add ESXi host to a domain, an AD domain, then we can use our AD user accounts instead of just our ESXi uh, root account. That means that we have traceability and accountability of those administrative actions. So in order to do that, I want to bring up my uh, demo environment here. And to do that, there's a couple of requirements on the ESXi host that I need to do. So in my environment here, I'll show you what, that, what those requirements are. So first, if we go to the hosts, we need to make sure that we have NTP enabled on the hosts. So you'll see here that we've got an NTP server configured, the client is enabled and running. The reason why we have to have NTP configured and running is that Kerberos is the, uh, uh, the protocol that we're using for authentication to Active Directory, and that is a time-sensitive protocol. So that means that uh, the time needs to be consistent between the Active Directory domain as well as the ESXi host. So you'll see in my lab that that service is enabled and running. The next thing that we'll want to check is we'll want to make sure that we have the firewall rules are enabled for this. So in this case, you'll see that if I, I Right now, you'll see if I go here that there's a Active Directory group that is unchecked. So these are the ports that are required to uh, enable the basically the communication. So the ESXi firewall will default block these. Um, you don't actually have to go in and do this right now. When we go through the UI, it will automatically enable that firewall, uh, those firewall rules. So we can uh, go ahead and use the ports and protocols as necessary. But if you're having any troubleshooting issues, that's definitely a place you're going to want to check to make sure that the, uh, that the firewall is configured appropriately. Finally, we're going to want to go to the network configuration here, and this is going to be on the VM kernel. And you're just going to want to make sure that you've got a search domain in here and a DNS server. So that's going to make sure that our AD hosts, or our, sorry, our ESXi hosts, are able to communicate effectively with the Active Directory domain, find it, and uh, be able to basically present itself to the, the domain. So those are the essential requirements uh, on the ESXi host standpoint to join your hosts. So now there's a, a couple other things as we get into actually adding the hosts. So in this demo environment, I switch over to Active Directory users and computers here. I've created two users here, an Alley and a Dennis. So those are the two users that I'm going to be using here. And you'll see I also created a group here in the root called ESX admins. This is the group and by default it's in, in the root of your Active Directory structure that basically anyone that is a member of that group will be able to log on with administrative privileges to your ESX I hosts. Now that location, because some organizations are not comfortable with having a uh, you might want to have it within a, a different OU, for instance, in the Active Directory. That is a setting that can be changed. And so to do that, we'll go to the, um, let's see, that's the advanced system settings. And then we'll go to config. Here we go, the host agent ESX group. So if you want that to be in a separate OU or you want a different group name, that's where you can go ahead and change it. For the purposes of this demo, I'm just gonna leave it in there. So as of right now, we have the ESX admins group. 
And right now there is, Ali is the only user in that group. So Dennis is not. So to add the hosts, there's a couple ways to do it. So you're gonna be looking for this authentication services tab. And right now you can see here, it says that we're using local authentication. So that's using your root accounts. To join a domain, it's relatively straightforward. You click the button, you say, hey, what's the, what's the domain that I wanna join? I wanna join corp.local. And I'm gonna use and this is your domain administrator account. And you go ahead and press OK. This might take a, a minute or two as it goes through the process to join the domain. Then once that's complete, this where it says local authentication will change. It will go ahead and say Active Directory authentication. And it will give information on the domain that is joined to. Now, quick question, do you need to use the Active Directory um, domain admin credentials or is it a, a role that would require just the ability to join a machine to the domain? It's any account that has the ability to join a machine to the domain. So this basically is um, when you're doing a direct authentication, so you can see it just flipped over. So now uh, this ESXi host is in uh, the Active Directory domain at this point. So you, any account that has the ability to join, in this case, basically the ESXi host is directly talking with the Active Directory domain using the credentials that you uh, supplied there. So we can also verify this. If we go over to computers now and we do a refresh, we'll see that the ESXi host has now been joined to the domain. So that's handy and uh, works really well, but, but what happens if you've got a lot of hosts. I don't want to be going through the UI and clicking uh, a million times and retyping my password. So in this case, you can use Power CLI. So I have a uh, script here that I brought up. You can see, um, basically, it takes uh, a, another file. I have a text file here, which has the names of all the ESX hosts. In this case, it's just uh, host one and host two. The information, in this case, what my uh, domain admin and, and domain admin password are. And then basically it will open a connection to the vCenter server, go through each host in that name file, ask for the root password for that host. It will then log on to that host as root. And then we'll, this command here goes through and joins the domain. So basically it says, here's the domain that I wanna join. Here's the username I'm going to use to join the domain. Here's the password. And then this is just saying, uh, I don't want to be confirmed. I don't want you to ask to confirm that I'm going to do it. So I can go ahead and run this now. So it's going to go ahead and ask for root password. And this case, it aired me out because it's already on the domain. And then we'll see here, uh, this 02 is not on the domain yet, so this is gonna go ahead and join the domain. As it's going ahead and joining the domain, there's a third way that you can handle and enforce domain joins, which I will skip ahead and show you as this is going on. And that is through a host profile. So if I go over to my policies and profiles in vCenter, I have two host profiles that I've created. Basically one that is for AD authentication and the other is for AD authentication versus via proxy. So I'll go into this one for AD host authentication proxy. And this host profile is completely stripped down. The only thing that is verifying is that the host is using, is connected to Active Directory. So in this case, it's under the security and services, security settings, authentication configuration, and Active Directory configuration. And very simple, straightforward here. So if I edit this host profile, the only thing that it asks for is what is the domain that you want to join, and then use the user specified credentials. If I was using authentication proxy, I would go here. Um, that's the only difference between those, uh, between those host profiles. So what I can do is if I go back to my host and clusters view, I can set this host profile 
I will attach it to this cluster. And I can go ahead and check compliance. So um, in this process, if you were to have uh, ESX host three, for example, that you have not previously joined to the domain, uh, would you be prompted for a password or username and password, excuse me? It would show as non-compliant. And then when you, if you went ahead and tried to re remediate it, yep. it would ask you for the password to, to join. The ah, host, that's great. Join the domain. So in this case, I can go remediate. As this is going in my lab environment, it's a little, a little slow. What I'll do is I'll just demonstrate what it looks like to log into a host via your Active Directory credentials. So I can take my host here, ESX 01A. So this one is has been joined to the domain. And so in this case, I'm going to log in with Allie. Remember, Allie was the user that was, and we're gonna make sure that we specify that she is a domain user as opposed to a local user. Enter her password. And you'll see that I've logged in. And normally you would see when you're, you traditionally think about logging into your ESXi host, you would log in as root, you'd see root there. But we can see that I am in as Allie. Um, and I can run all the normal commands, you know, if I wanna, if I wanna move over to a, um, uh, you know, check out the, the logs or um, check out the temp directory. Um, you know, I can, all that information is there. I can, I can move around exactly as I normally could. So as we mentioned with this nano lab that you can also, instead of just having the hosts talk directly to Active Directory, there is what is known as the authentication proxy. In this case, your vCenter server appliance will act as an intermediary between the ESXi hosts and the Active Directory domain. And so what this means is instead of having to send that uh, domain administrator account or um, account that has domain join credentials to each individual hosts, that will stay local on the vCenter. So there is one additional setup step that needs to happen. And in this case, we're gonna to go to the vCenter management interface, and there's a service that you will need to turn off. It is surprisingly called the vSphere Authentication Proxy Service. So if we go down here, we'll see the VMware uh, vSphere Authentication Proxy Service. Um, you'll see it has started in my lab, I've already started it, but you would simply select the service and then up here at the top, you could start or stop it. That is the only additional step that you need to do. And then if we go to the individual host, once again, I can go ahead and in this case on 01, I'm gonna leave the domain. This will drop all the domain permissions. So just as an example, if I go back here and I attempt to log in, to 01, which is no longer in the domain, 01A. And I try to log in as, as Allie. With my password, with her password, um, I will be denied because I'm, you know, no longer have permissions on that account. So when you want to use the authentication proxy, the only difference is you're using the proxy server's IP address, which is your vCenter IP address. So in this case, I'm gonna use my vCenter IP address. And you have to specify um, the domain that you're joining again. So I'm joining corp.local and I'm going through the vCenter proxy service. And then we'll see now that I've joined the Active Directory domain via the proxy server. So the, the only other aspect that I wanna show is there's also from a, a PowerShell perspective, so you've got a bunch of hosts in, in your domain and let's say that you're retiring hosts and you're moving to a new environment. Um, 
you can use these same PowerShell commands to uh, get hosts out of the domain. So if you don't want to do them uh, manually and you want to do PowerShell, once again, uh, you are able to fully script that. Um, also, you know, if, if you're looking at your build processes and you've got automated build processes for your ESXi hosts, uh, feel free to look into the, the PowerShell, PowerShell scripts as well. Then one other thing that I want to circle back with, with the joining the domain, is there are other examples as well. If you want to specify that you're joining your hosts to a different OU, say that I want to put them in a bucket, um, you know, instead of just in the, the computer's bucket, but I want to put them in a, an ESXi host OU, um, you can go ahead and specify that as part of your domain name. Basically that you would specify those OUs as a additional paths beyond that corp.local corp .local in this case. So that is the fast and furious introduction for the your TAM Nano Lab on joining hosts to a domain, why you want to do it, and a couple of different ways to do it within the user interface. Great. Awesome. Any other folks out there got questions or comments? Anything in the chat? Now, this is Jody, and, and speaking as a, a former security officer, I, you know, I think this is definitely something that that complies with a lot of security requirements from from groups that are are going to be outside the virtualization team, whether it's uh, infosec or uh, typically there's an IT audit or compliance group as well. Um, it's one of the things that we would look for. You don't want to see uh, individual uh, names uh, being given rights, especially you know back kind of to the beginning where you're you're granting the, those rights to the group. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Anyone else last call? Cool. All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining. And uh, thanks again, Brandon, for presenting. This has been great. So have a great weekend, everybody.